Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Monday morning and welcome to Run It Back here on FanDuel TV. Our new temporary time of, oh, you know, 10, 17 East Coast. The normal time the shows should start, according to Chandler Parsons. Uh, Chandler, why are we starting at this weird time today? I'm just picturing me being like in season still, going to practice late and being like, I swear to God, my phone didn't change time. I'm in Cabo. I, mean, <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't know the. I didn't know we sprung forward or whatever the hell happened. And uh, <laughs> my alarm. You know what? I'll own it. But just know you, you will. It was a. It was a real mistake that I think would happen to everybody if they were in Cabo when this happened. Spoke. If the, yes, if they were in Cabo. Look at Shams' face. Shams is like, I can't believe this is even happening to us. And that is Shams Sharania Stadium Center. Of course, there in the middle. Chandler P on the end. We'll be joined by Lou Will here in a little bit. Um, but we did have a lot of good basketball. We had some good basketball, some bad basketball, and just some basketball. But here we go in the first one. T-Wolves, Lakers, no cat, no go bear. Anthony Davis, however, what a night. 120-109. It was a big win. He had 27, a season high, 25 rebounds. 10 of those were offensive. And a career high seven steals. That one almost got me. I thought it was a typo. Five assists, three blocks. I um, Yeah, it, it was a huge night. The steals thing was pretty cool. The first player in NBA history to record 25 points, 25 or more rebounds, five assists, and five or more steals in a game. Dang, I have to read all of that over again to remind myself, Chandler, how impressive is this from AD at this point in the season? It was unbelievable. And this is what we all want to see all the time because he's capable of doing this consistently. And he's so talented offensively. We we know he can score. We know he can go get a bucket. We know he can face you up. And his high, his high level IQ on the offensive line is, is through the roof. But when you see him dominate and get physical like this and dunking everything and on the glass, on the offensive glass, Nas Reed's not a little, and he made him seem like a little boy last night, and he absolutely dominated this game. And I had a feeling during the third quarter when he was all these steals and the assists, I was like, man, is this, is this guy, is this going to be the day? Is this somebody going to get a quadruple double? And obviously he didn't, but seven steals is nuts. And this was an absolutely dominating performance with Towns out, with Rudy Gobert out. He took full advantage of his size, his physicality. And Nas Reed had a good game on the other end, but man, they had no answers for for Anthony Davis um, on the glass or in the paint at, at all. So this is why this is why when Minnesota's in this in this this ranking of one to three, where are they going to finish? Whoever they face first round could be the Lakers. It's not going to be an easy an easy you know advance for them. It does. It, just putting that into perspective, it sort of reiterates just how difficult a quadruple double is going to be. We got you, Wemby. Um, all that being said, let's go back to the bubble season. Not everyone saw the bubble season in, in full defense, but that was AD's big, big year. He had great numbers. This year, his numbers are pretty comparable across the board. But it seems like a bigger stage, Chandler. Would you say this year has been his most impressive as a Laker? Yeah, it, it's. It, it, I think it has. And I, obviously, their their record, their ranking right now is not where they want to be. But he's been on the floor. And with Anthony Davis, with guys like him, guys like Zion, you just want to see them healthy and you want to see them playing at an elite level. And he's done that. I think he's only missed four games uh, this season. So that, that to me is very impressive. And obviously we know the season LeBron has, has had, but LeBron said from training camp, from preseason, this is Anthony Davis's team. We're going to go as far as him. And LeBron has definitely carried the load and done his part. But when you see Anthony Davis shine like this, at this point of the season two, going into the postseason, this is the version they need for the, for them to advance, for them to knock off whatever, what, they're probably going to get a seven or eight seed. So for them to knock off a one or two seed, Anthony Davis has to have games like this in the playoffs. All right, talk to me about uh, where you rank the dude. Right now, this season, in the NBA, where would you put AD? I mean, it's tough when you ask after a game like last night, because after last yeah, night, I, I want to say top five, top seven. But <laughs> uh, he's anywhere from probably 10 to 15. Like, there's so many other guys right now that have an MVP-type season, so many other guys that have really taken their game to the next level. Um, but Anthony Davis, when he's healthy – He's an MVP type player. He's a first team all NBA guy. So I think he's anywhere from 10 to 15. But again, those rankings, we like to do these all the time. They they change so often. 
but he just gave us a little a little check like all right hey i'm still healthy I, i'm still able to dominate this isn't lebron this is this is anthony davis moving forward so now can he do it again though i want to see can, can he do it again in their next game can he consistently do this um and not just give us these little tastes here and there i, I want to see him continue to do this and to dominate just like he did last night I mean, look, you didn't have Cat, you didn't have Gobert. That's not Anthony Davis's fault. He did what he had to do regardless, Shams. But your biggest takeaway for a win like this for this Lakers team against the T-Wolves? This is a crazy stat, info, whatever you want to call it. The Lakers are six games over 500 for the first time since May 2021. That's before the Russell Westbrook trade. Uh, that's, that's before, obviously, so many changes we've seen on this roster. Uh, that's after the bubble season. Uh, that 2020-21 season, Anthony Davis had another big year, but then he had the groin injury down the stretch. And that Lakers team faltered in the second round. But this is a team now, we've talked all season, Darvin Ham, one of the major issues of this season have, has been lineups and been rotation. But now, finally, I think since the start of the year, they've got a, a, a lineup that they rely on. That's D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, Rui Hachimura, LeBron James, Anthony Davis. And D'Angelo Russell's play at a, at a great level. I mean, he had 40-plus points over the weekend. Uh, he's shooting the three ball very well. Austin Reeves, we know what he can do. Rui Hachimura as well. LeBron James and Anthony Davis both kind of playing banged up. LeBron James with the ankle, Anthony Davis with the shoulder. Uh, but now you're starting to see this team come together and you're starting to finally see a rotation that Darvin Ham trusts, relies on, and this group has confidence in. Torian Prince coming off the bench now. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie coming off the bench. He had a block on Damian Lillard. He blocked Shea Gills, Alexander, and Damian Lillard both within a week. I mean, I, I don't know many guards that can do that in the NBA right now. So this is a team that's starting to find its identity a little bit. Um, and, and like Chandler said, if Anthony Davis performs like this, no question this team has a shot not only to upset someone in the first round, but to go far. And we talked about this during All-Star Weekend, too. Barring injuries, barring suspensions, whatever it is, this is when teams' rotations finally get set. This is where they have their starting lineup. This is when guys, they have their team going forward. And like Sean just said, they have their identity. So now the trade deadline's over. They got their Spencer Dinwiddie. You know, there's, we're still waiting on Gabe Vincent, Cam Reddish in and out of the lineup. But for the most part, we know exactly what they're going to get now. We know they got their starting lineup. We know that D'Lo is looking like, you know, he's playing at an All-Star level right now once he knows that once he found out that he's not getting traded, he's moved here. So the Lakers, they're, they're starting to figure it out at the right time for sure. And everyone knows their role moving forward, which is huge. It's kind of crazy too, because you mentioned a lot of those injuries and, and AD and LeBron sort of dealing with their own issues. And we'll get to the, the official injuries here in a second, Shams. But Chandler, they've now beaten the Thunder, the Bucks, the T-Wolves, all of that in the last week. They, uh, we call them title contenders. Is that is that something? When we say contenders, are we saying they have a shot to go to the Western Conference Finals? They have a shot going to the finals. They have a shot to win it all. What what do they have? It's crazy because you know, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, we we're talking, and you know, they might not even make the play in. They're going to get beaten the play in, and they have a game like last night and a week like this to where they show like, man, this team is talented. And I always say, if you can get hot for a month in the playoffs, anything can happen. The Western Conference is deep. And so barring a couple upsets, and it's a weird year where Minnesota and Oklahoma City, they've kind of been at the top all year long, but are they the best team? Teams, guys trust, you know, the Clippers and the Nuggets a lot more. So do I think they're an actual title contender this year? I don't, you know, a lot of things can happen from now till June though. And especially this week right now, I think they go on the road one time at Sacramento, but then they've been home. So it's a huge advantage of them. They can catch Sacramento by the time they even hit the road after that road game. So there's still just enough time where they can really make a move, but no, I don't think they're as good as these other teams. I don't think they're as good as Denver. I don't think they're as good as the Clippers, but in the playoffs and the postseason, you know, like I said, an injury, something happens. All they got to do is get hot for a month and stay healthy, and it's happened before. So I wouldn't bet on them to be a contender, but they definitely have an, uh, an opportunity here on this home stretch where they can really, really make a move. Yeah, they have a crazy schedule blip or something that they, I think they have 12 games. They don't leave the state of California, something crazy. It's like kind of oh, nice. Like it's March, a nice. Like March 26 or something. They're yeah. in California. It's insane. That ain't bad. That is not bad at all. All right, so they have a lot of room. And as we've been mentioning all season long, the Western Conference is kind of seems up for grabs. Look who we're joined by now. Lou Will in the house. I love this Monday. It's just got all the Monday feels and all the fun. Um, Lou, we've been talking about AD because we, we wanted to compare him. You know, the bubble was a great season for him, but it was sort of 
it's the bubble season. So then we've got this season. His numbers are almost the same. He had a night like he had last night that was historic. What do you see when you see Anthony Davis playing right now? I love it. I love it. And, and this is where, when he has games like this, this is where the criticism comes in uh, sometimes with AD because you know how dominant he can be. You know what type of force that he can be on the offensive and defensive end. You know, along with his 25 rebounds, the guy threw in seven steals and three blocks. Like, this is who <laughs> AD can be. This is who Lakers Nation need him to be night in and night out. And so when you, he doesn't give you these dominant performances where it feels like he's kind of passive and he's just he's settling for jump shots, that's where the frustration comes in. Last night, he played straight out bully ball. He understood that nobody else was going to be better than him on the floor, in the paint, in any stretch of the game, and he showed it. So this is what the Lakers, this is what the Lakers need from him from this point moving forward to put them in a position that they need to carry them forward to be the, the best player on the team, like LeBron James put it, or the second best player on a lot of nights. One way or another, he has to have these type of performances in order for this team to turn the corner in this last stretch of the season. So this was great for them. There were moments. Poor Nas Reed just looked exhausted. Just it seemed like a long night for him. Um, they showed Gabe Vincent a few times on the bench there. Shams, what, what do we have on those guys, the latest on the Lakers injuries? Gabe Vincent finally to the point where he's progressing to conditioning and ramping up on the floor. His window, I'm told, to potentially return begins next week. Um, and this is a guy that's only played five games in the month of December, last played December 20th. Um, and, and they're hopeful that there's no setback. There's, that's always been the thing here with, with Gabe Vincent's rehab. It was before his knee surgery. And then after he underwent that arthroscopic knee surgery, it's been just a, a process of a ramp up, getting him on the court pain-free, making sure he's able to cut, move, play with contact. But now he's finally at the point where it's really just about ramping up, getting into basketball conditioning before he returns. So barring a setback, look for his window to potentially return to start next week. Jared Vanderbilt, that's another player. He was on the bench, no boot anymore. He's got that midfoot sprain. Uh, he hasn't played since February 1. I'm told over the next week or two, they're hopeful that he also progresses potentially to getting back on the floor. So that's two Major rotational players, Vanderbilt, we know how impactful he is defensively, uh, really on both ends of the floor. He's really a glue piece for this team. We'll see if he gets back in the starting lineup or how they, how Darvin Ham handles that. But both of these players should provide some level of a boost uh, to the Lakers. Oh, man, this is going to be fun. They're going to shock some people. I just know it. Uh, we got to talk about foul discrepancy. There seemed to be a, a big one, at least according to Anthony uh, Edwards. He was frustrated after this one because the disparity in the number of shots taken was pretty big. Lakers had 22 of 29, T-Bulls 11 of 13. Um, right now, the Lakers are sixth in free throw attempts per game. The Timberwolves ninth. I don't know if this game was a fluke, Chandler, but does he have a right to be frustrated? When you look at the the season long average six and ninth, it's not like it's it's far off. I mean, last night there were some plays where he would start driving and he would feel contact and literally look at the ref while he's dribbling. So you could tell he was frustrated. He only got four free throw attempts last night, but uh, I think it's just chalk it up to one of those nights. I think the Lakers did a great job just kind of imposing their will, playing physical on the offensive glass. And Anthony Davis got hit quite often, too, on some of these putbacks, some of these block shots he got blocked. There was a lot of contact there. So I think this is just one of the games where the refs let them be physical, let them play. Uh, Anthony Edwards, he said this before about SGA, about the foul calls, now the Lakers. I think he's just <laughs> – he. He's got to get used to not getting that whistle yet. Play through the play through the contact, um, and just to continue to do what he's doing. But this was a night where I think it was just a physical hand checky game where the refs were letting him play, I, and I don't think it was a story here. Yeah, we don't mind that as viewers. Uh, Bucks and way, Clippers. No, no, I have oh. a question. I, I got a question. Oh, no. Carl Anthony had the surgery. Already or no? It's this upcoming week. It's this upcoming week. I was going to say, why the hell is he on the bench, like, walking around? After, I was so confused last night when I was watching the game. We got you, Chandler. Shams knows all the answers. So <laughs> we can move on to the Bucks Clippers. This one was kind of a bummer because you didn't have Kawhi. You didn't have Paul George. The Bucks hold him off, 124-117. Damian Lillard, 16 of his 34 five, hello, points came in the fourth quarter. Uh, he had 11 assists. I'm having a Chandler morning. Uh, Giannis and Dame, only second teammates since 1980 to record at least 30 points and 10 assists in a game. Um, we waited. We didn't know if this would work. Seems to be reworking, Chandler. Does this two-man situation settled now in Milwaukee? 
I mean, yeah, these are two elite offensive players. They have the new coach now. They seem to be making somewhat adjustments where they, you know, they go to a zone, they switch, they go small, they go big. So I will credit Doc for, to, for kind of trying different things. But yeah, when you look at these guys, we said it when that when the trade happened. On paper, this makes perfect sense. You got one of the most physical downhill players in Giannis that can kind of get to the rim whenever he wants, get out in transition. And you pair that with one of the best elite shooters in the league that can provide him with even more spacing. It sounded good. And now it took a little bit while, uh, it took a little while to figure it out. It took a little bit of time for the other guys to know their role. But yeah, the same thing like the Lakers, they're clicking. This team is clicking right now and they're looking to be dangerous. I think they're going to snag that two seed uh, in the East and kind of jump Cleveland here soon. I think they're tied with them now. Um, but this team is, is offensively, they have so much power. They have other guys too, whether they have, you know, the Lopez's, the Connaughton's, these guys can also throw in, you know, five threes. So this team is dangerous and, and it's, it's going to come down to them in Boston. It's going to be a hell of a, a, a hell of a series, but it's definitely, you're seeing it starting, starting to work guys, knowing their role guys, knowing their spacing, they're running a bunch of different sets now and, and they look really comfortable. Yeah, Lou, I'm wondering if there's when you watch them play now, obviously compared to the beginning, it looks different. Is there anything that they still have yet to master or are they in a really good place where we are in the season? Yeah, they're going to have to adjust again when Chris Middleton's in the lineup. You know, obviously that's somebody who's going to give them 20 plus points a game um, that you're going to have to work in. Other than that, I like the fact that Doc has figured it out. He's put these two guys in actions together. You know, he's put... A lot of pressure on defense is putting them in a two-man game where you got to really pick your poison. You know, whether Dame is going to come off and shoot. Giannis is a roll threat. Giannis is also a post-up threat. Obviously, Dame is a drive threat. So putting them in actions, putting a lot of pressure on the defense, it's worked for them. And I think this is something that, that they found to be successful, opposed to them coming down on offense. Dame have an opportunity to do his thing. It doesn't work. Now it's a swing-swing. Now it's Giannis' opportunity to do his thing. And if it doesn't work, now they're playing scramble basketball. Instead, they're picking teams apart in a two-man game. This, ha this worked against the Clippers. So I think this is a great sample size. The only thing they're going to have to figure out is what are they going to do when it comes to that three-man game. You know, Chris Middleton mm -hmm. is going to be a huge part of that. But so far, for those two guys to figure it out together and play off of each other's energy, to read and react on the offensive end, it worked well for them last night. This is great. I mean, you heard Chandler talk about how he's he thinks they're going to Grab that set. They're in the second spot right now, but it's a half game. So it's a flip flop for a while here, but they got 17 games left. Do you think the Bucks, when it's said and done, regular season ends, are they sitting in that two spot or does Cleveland come back? Yeah, but it's in the air. It's in the air. And, and listen, they've been projected to be a better team than Cleveland since this trade has happened. And even before that trade, we had high, high, high expectations for the Milwaukee Bucks. So if they do snag that spot, no surprise there. I think that's what's expected. That's what they should have had this entire year. You know, obviously with the coaching change, they hit a little turbulence there, but they figured it out. Um, they've got everything right. It's smooth sailing right now, and, and that team is rolling. So I really think they should, and they will finish with that second seed. Shams, internally, feels like a night and day from where we were just a few weeks ago with this Bucks team. How are they feeling there in-house about where they are? Confident for sure, and I, I actually, we, we do need to give Doc Rivers a lot of credit because what he's brought to this team is, I think, structure and down the stretch of games, you've seen the ball in Damian Lillard's hands, and that was something that was a focal point, something that, you know, they just were not able to do under Adrian Griffin is really manage the game and figure out exactly where you want the ball to go. And Damian Lillard, the ball's, the, the game is best for the Bucks when down the stretch of, of games, it's in his hands. And you have to give Doc Rivers a lot of credit. This team has completely flipped the script defensively. That was the major issue on this team all year. Uh, but they're now hovering around 10th in terms of defensive rating in, in the whole league. They were 18th before Doc Rivers came in. Uh, they're giving up a ton of point, uh, paint, uh, uh, points in the paint, 24th in the league. Now they're about 7th in the league in points uh, in the paint. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that's completely turned it around defensively, and you have to give Doc Rivers a lot of credit for that. Yeah, there were a lot of us making a lot of noise. It's going to be interesting uh, where they end up. Chandler, this one goes to you first because it deals with daylight savings, and I feel like you're now our expert on that. But <laughs> Paul George and Kawhi Leonard set out yesterday's game because uh, it was noon Pacific, and they played on Saturday at 1. So it was 22 hours in between games, and Ty Lue mm. said that that was extreme, very extreme. Does he have a point? 
Yeah, I don't. Has this ever happened before, where a game kind of within twenty four hours? That that is, he definitely has a point, and this goes against the whole load management thing, where this is a he gets an excused absence here by not by not playing these guys because that is I don't like I said I don't think I've ever seen this before where the daylight it savings, doesn't happen. I, I, hmm. it's, listen, it's confusing. It's definitely okay. confusing. Oh, Michelle, this is all news to me. The, the daylight saving situation, but yeah, yeah, I think he's got a point here. With given given their state of their career, where they are, how good they've been this year, everyone now in this position is looking for the playoffs. So, and it has when you have a situation like this where they played the day before, and then they kind of go fast forward to this, and it's a. It makes sense. I would have done the same thing if I was him. To me, I would have loved if James Harden would have really been aggressive mm-hmm. last night, kind of showed that he can still go and carry a team and then carry a team to a win and dominate. He was almost a little passive last night. Um, but yeah, to me, I think this is the right call. You can't play a guy twice within 24 hours. That's insane. Lou, does that what about everybody? That's else? never happened. Uh, it's not yeah, a night but everyone game. else is in Paul George and Kawhi Leonard with multiple injuries and surgeries <laughs> in their career. Yeah, I, but I, I think I've I think I've had this. Um a night game. Because when you play for the Clippers or you play for the Lakers, a lot of time you have same day games. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so one team is gonna play the noon game, one team is gonna play the seven PM game. And so I think if I'm not mistaken, I've played in a a, a game or two in twenty two hours where we've played the noon game and then the next day. Uh, we play an early game as well, and it's like a 22-hour window or something like that. But I mean, hmm. what's the uh, what's the difference? I don't I don't I don't know what's the difference. You know, extreme to me is four and five days and traveling across the country and things like that. Those two hours are you know a hit or miss. But you know, everybody has the right to coach their team and, and do what they see fit. So I thought this was interesting. I'm yeah, sure the, the television extreme, network weren't extremes a little much. At the end of the day, it's two basketball games. Like it's not extreme. Like yeah, I'm, I'm reacting. I'm, I'm reacting to the word extreme. That's extreme. what I'm reacting to. But same hey, that they that found a, they found a they found a loophole to, to, to get a guy some rest. So they did. I team. bet you nobody nobody will say anything about load management this game though. They definitely found a loophole <laughs> in this 24 hour rule. <laughs> They're like we're not touching that one. Um, here in the garden in New York. You had the Sixers oh, visiting the Knicks. Oh, boy. No Maxi in this one again, uh, but they win. 79-73, lowest point That's total in NBA bigger. this season. That's right. I said it. 79-73. to Kelly Oubre with 18-10. and 10. Buddy Heald with 16 points. Checking on Jalen Brunson. He did have 19. It's the first time since 2016 that two teams failed to reach 80 points in a game. It's, again, you'd think it was a typo. A lot of complaints about the high scoring this season, Chandler. So, Let's take it to the other extreme, shall we? What do we feel about this score? It was awful. And you know, <laughs> Jalen Brunson saying he played like dog shit. Guys aren't making shots. It was low percentage on you know, field goal percentage, and that was high turnovers. No one wants to see that. And I'm sitting here watching this game. And <laughs> Joel Embiid had 70 points this year. Yes. And his team scored 79 points in this game. It, it, it's it's insane. We've seen first half scores that are worse than this. So I agree. Listen, there's got to be a balance. I don't think we want to see this for sure because we have it in eight years and it's been great to watch. But this, the, the, there's got to be some sort of balance where there's defense, where there's threes, where there's transition. But nobody wants to watch this. Nobody wants to watch the ball be thrown all over the court, free throws, stoppage. This was a pretty brutal game. I will say it was a great win for Philadelphia to be able to take advantage of this and pull this out on the road. But I couldn't help but just think Joel Embiid had 70 points individually and their team had nine more points than he did. It's pretty crazy. And one. If you would have told him that they would to win. 31 at the end of the first half, Lou. That is nuts. Nobody no, wants yeah. to watch I, 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 Chandler, I see it different. It, it oh, was boy. simple and plain. There was a talent deficiency out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean... So do in fairness, yeah, there's a lot. There are a lot of bodies missing. It wasn't enough guys out there to score the ball, man. Just wasn't enough guys out there to score the ball. This was a this was an ugly one. This was a grind out game in the garden. And it just it wasn't enough buckets out there, man. It is what it is. That's it. So bad offense, right? We're not going to say this was good defense. We're going to call this bad offense across the board. It probably was. It probably the offense probably was as good as it was going to get with the lineups that both of these teams had, with so many injuries and guys being out. 
And no, it wasn't that great a defense. There was just awful, you know, unforced turnovers. There was they a lot of missed <laughs> wide open shots. I can't even credit this to a grind it out, slow down, physical defensive games. Guys just simply made played bad. Ooh, that's a tough Sunday in the garden. New Yorkers not loving that one. Shams, we got some Tom Thibodeau here going on. Said he expected the Knicks injured players to make the road trip. This next one coming up. And that he's hopeful that OG Ananobi will be cleared to play. A lot of people waiting for good news on this one, Shams. What do you got? Yeah, you know, OG Ananobi is close. I mean, he's he's been, this is right around the time that he's been expected to be back on the floor. So look over the next week or so, OG Ananobi will be, will be back on the court. Julius Randle continues to go through workouts, and his shoulder injury is one where he has to make sure he goes through the entire rehab. This isn't just about, you know, for OG Ananobi, it was about getting back on the floor, being able to shoot again, being able to get back to doing contact work. For Julius Randle, it's a, it's a lot more with that shoulder injury. We just saw Josh Richardson have season-ending surgery for a dislocated shoulder. Uh, we know Ben Matherin just had shoulder surgery for a torn labrum. So these shoulder injuries are ones where you want to make sure when you're back on the court, you don't just pop it again. You don't have another issue that then leads to that season-ending surgery. So Julius Randle, uh, he's continuing to go through his rehab as well, but OG Ananobi is close to a return. All right, it's good news seeing people on the bench out there. Uh, we have around the league here for a second because it was a scary moment with Alperin Shangoon, who landed very awkwardly on his right leg. This was he and DeMontis bonus going up at the same time. He comes down, and uh, it's about an under a minute uh, left to play uh, in this force. Well, you don't see it very often, but he actually left the court in a wheelchair. Um, Shams, what can you tell us about Shangoon? Obviously, it has to be concern, especially with that scene there. It looked like on the feed, he spoke about how his ankle was messed up on that play. I'm told he's having MRIs on his ankle, his right ankle, as well as his right knee today. He also was grabbing at his right knee. So there's ankle and knee injuries that Sangoon has about a month away from that from the regular season ending. This is a Rockets team that about four games out of the playing tournament. So obviously they're, they're waiting on pins and needles to see just how bad this injury is for Sangoon. Not a small man. Um, Chandler, that was tough to see because the wheelchair, I, I, that doesn't come out very often. What'd you think? No, that was awful. And it, it's hard to tell exactly what happened if something broke or something tore there, but you never want to see someone, you know, fall like that and, and not be able to go out of off the court on their own will. So this it sucks because this kid, he's having a great season. He's such a young dude. He's 21 years old. He's, you know, a rising star in this league. Um, obviously, the postseason is kind of a pipe dream for them, but you, you know, you never want to see anybody go down like this. And hopefully it's a speedy recovery and, and, and you know, it's nothing serious, but this didn't this didn't look good. Dude, that size, that weight coming down like that, uh, it's brutal. So I, I hope it's nothing serious and that he gets he gets back soon because that looked ugly. Lou, did you know as soon as he went down that it looked bad? It looked it looked really bad, and and to bring the wheelchair out is is alarming, man. I, um, you hate to see a guy go down like that um, in a competitive play and just it, it it was ugly and I, I just hate to see him being wheeled off so you know prayers up to him and hopefully everything works out yeah that, that was a tough one uh we're gonna take a quick break here shams love you mean it uh see you tomorrow bright and early you know the times i don't have to remind you and uh we'll be right back <laughs> oh no that man has a family starting out with oh kelly Ubre has a family zion uh, oh. oh, Kelly Oubre was trying to go with the right he here. Like Ella? Yeah, we tried. I'll give him that. They Certainly both tried. Were really high, though. You know, we yeah, are not right? talking it's about crazy. the New Orleans Pelicans at all, and they are. I having know we aren't. Pretty solid I think season. They prefer it like that. Precious. No. I think, they, I think that's how they want it, Chandler. Uh, seriously. I would. I wouldn't want anybody to talk about anything. Yeah, oh, Surprise the, the, the world. Ball. Precious. The poster off your own miss? Yeah, that's kind of nice, actually. Oh, it's like, it's so good. All right, let me see what we got here. Giannis, but, mm, Rui tried. No, sir. That's a bad business move there, not Rui. Going. Rui, this not, this not your MO, Rui. You got to stick to the <laughs> yeah. script, bro. Yeah. Heavy roller. This is right. not I don't know. He must have just <laughs> was feeling himself a little bit. Thought maybe not. Why not? Why not try? I mean, he didn't even get close. He met him early. Dunk contest, let's go. Sign up now. Uh oh, 
Excuse me. Watch uh -oh. your head. That's a tall man. Very tall man. By the way, he needs to pipe down with the text, too. The league he's has got, some he's, fun again. Yeah, but he's got like 12 or 13 texts. He's looking at a suspension here soon. Yeah, that's not good. He can't, he can't afford that yeah. at all right now, actually. You guys mentioned Spencer like, Dinwiddie earlier. On, here we go. National Basketball League. Yeah, Ooh, big, like, that's fun. That's like a video but game. This was, this was impressive. Rarely, game the line, rarely see great this player. Yeah. That's big. Is that the second game saving, game winning block we've had in like five days? Yeah. What sure the is. hell is going on here? That's fun. Jalen Green. Time. Oh, this was <laughs> insane. This was nuts. Oh, this was nasty. Oh, my God. Watch your head. My goodness. That is. There was, I saw a video of a guy like courtside recording this and the camera, that view was absolutely insane. Dude, I oh love when he does, God. I hate when he pulls up and shoots from far because I'm like, no, don't do that. Do that. Do all of that. Kawhi, be young Demar. I don't see, I didn't see what happened. Oh, okay. He, yep, he a, little a little behind. I thought he dumped it. A surprise. Hmm. <laughs> the claw. Huh. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bam! I've seen him bam, make bam, some crazy Ohio. plays, bro. Giant hands. Oh! <laughs> who go. is that down here? Oh, Kuzma, watch your head. Hey, who, who is that? Is that Kuzma? Kuzma, yeah. Damn, Kuz. Don't be that guy, Kuz. What a yeah, season. don't be that guy. Well, he was that guy. All right. I mean, I feel like for this next Precisely kid, this is it. This guy. is the moment. Brandon Boston Jr. on Giannis. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, bro. Yeah, BB. And, right. he got teed up. T2. and he got teed up afterwards. The NBA got to chill with these tees, man. Come on, man. This is the NBA. Teed up for what? Because he was excited? Yeah, I think he, he barked yeah, a little we much. Yeah, got to relax. Come, oh, on. come on, man. He just dunked on Giannis. Like, I'm, who's not going to be excited? If you dunk on two people, you should be able to no celebrate. Most association. Like, yeah, you got to chill a little bit. There are, there are other things to deal with. We're going to take a quick break here, come back, wrap things up when Run It Back returns. <laughs> then my grandson, who actually got a technical foul last week. I don't know if it's in the blood Bobby or what, but it's true. It's a true story. Tell the details of the tech. The guy stole the ball from him and he tackled him. I, I don't mean he, you know, bumped him. He wrapped his arms around him and he tackled him to the floor. First career? First career, First career tech. What, yeah. uh, no, mom, I let mom and dad do that. I wasn't there. They told me the story. But you are proud of it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. Five years old. Hey, man, stole the ball. What do you want? That's Daddy something. Hilarious. That is, imagine having Pop as your grandfather. That's, that's just weird. Uh, Lou, <laughs> word on the street is you had a pretty good weekend with, uh, with the girls out there. What happened? I did. I did. Shout out to my Winners United women's basketball AAU team. We won championships for our fifth grade, sixth grade. Uh, no, I'm sorry, fifth, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Clean sweep this weekend. Great weekend. Great camaraderie for the girls. Salute to all of my young ladies. I coached the eighth grade team, so this was special. This was a great weekend for us all. Clean Congrats. sweep. Welcome. Well done, sir. That's well, well done. Chandler, Clean did you do anything weekend. productive? I'm getting the hell out of here. What time is the show tomorrow? Just figured out. Be like, is it 7 a.m. tomorrow or 6 a.m. in LA? Because Taylor Seven? just told me Mexico stopped doing daylight savings a few years ago, which I was not informed on either. So, okay. I'll so, 7 o'clock. There's something going LA on. Time. <laughs> There's something going on. I, I saw the group chat and said, Chandler, can you log on, please? <laughs> they just don't partake in daylight savings. Like, who, how do they, they can just decide that? It's bogus. Well, it has its history on, in farming, and uh, we have never switched it. I, for one, am over it, but yes, Chandler. I'll be there Only early you. tomorrow, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on time. Yeah, right. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Safe flight back. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.